And good afternoon and welcome. Uh, welcome to WPI, welcome to chemical engineering session at WPI. Uh, I am Professor Steve Kimotech. I am the Associate Department Head in Chemical Engineering here and uh, a professor of practice. Um, the, I'm also an alumnus from, uh, from a very long time ago. I got three degrees here and, uh, and came back about eight years ago to, uh, to, to be a professor here. I've got a brief presentation, uh, maybe about 20 minutes or so, and then we can open it up for, uh, for questions. But again, welcome. Um, and sharing the screen. Um, so first, I don't know about you, but when I was a high school senior, I had no idea what a chemical engineer was. Uh, but my guidance counselor told me I was good in chemistry, and good in math, so I should be a chemical engineer. Uh, what, what it is, is uh, first of all, it's not chemistry. Um, it's a very, very broad discipline that deals with the, the application of chemical systems, uh, industrial, nat natural, you name it. Uh, and we're transforming chemical, biological, physical transformations of matter uh, and energy into something more useful without compromise to environment, safety, or, uh, or finite resources. Um, the difference, if you will, uh, is probably easy, most easily explained um, by something we've become very, very familiar with, uh, the mRNA vaccines. So it was a chemist um, or a biologist or a biochemist, uh, but one of the, the, the pure sciences who made the discovery that, uh, that these materials would make a, a wonderful vaccine for COVID. It was a chemical engineer um, or groups of chemical engineers who was able to bring that to society and make you know, hundreds of millions of doses and, and get them out. Uh, and that's probably the easiest description. The, the uh, pure scientist is working in a lab on a small scale, and we're bringing this material to society. Um, so we're taking a low value raw material. Um, we are doing some reactions. We are separating it, and we are selling a high value product. Uh, as simple example, again, on the vaccine. So it, the one of the primary ingredients besides the, the RNA um, is it's being shipped in lipids, um, which come from chicken eggs. So um, something of that's plentiful available, relatively low value, and uh, we're turning it into something that is that is a very high value. Um, another, another simple example, we have an awful lot of students, uh, a lot of graduates who go to work for, um, for Pepsi. And, um, and Pepsi companies. Uh, and you think there's a Frito-Lay manufacturing site not far from us. So you think they're um, you know, you're taking a potato, uh, a relatively low value, plentiful material, and turning it into something of that's actually high, very high profit margin, like, like, like potato chip. Uh, again, our goals are to do it safely, environmentally friendly, uh, efficient, sustainable, and economic. We operate on a whole bunch of different scales. Um, it can be from a nanoscale up all the way through um, through large chemical plants. I used to work uh, at, a, at a site that made photoresists for the semiconductors to operate our, our cell phones and our computers. Um, and there, the chemicals are used in about 100 nanometer scale with what we're trying to do. Um, operating in large chemical plants that took up uh, several square miles. So wide range of scales. We work just about everywhere. We, a number of us work in traditional chemical industry uh, and that could be in production and process, making new products. Um, process control, sales, a lot, a lot of us go ultimately into management. Uh, and we have some, uh, 
you know, some quotes later on from some, some of our graduates who have gone on to, uh, to, to very high positions. About 20% of us will go on to grad school, will get into research, maybe go into service industries, environmental consulting, some go into medicine, into patent attorneys, um, military, government, you name it. Uh, but we're all over the place. Some even come back and become uh, teachers and faculty members. You can use your, your degree in a lot of different types of careers. Um, so you could concentrate, say, in advanced materials, making the uh, high-end ceramics or making high-end insulation materials uh, that might go into to a, say a spacecraft or into the Arctic or Antarctic. Um, you could work in the biopharma industry. I mean, certainly have people in uh, Sanofi and Biogen, Zen, Genzyme, uh, AbbVie, on and on. Uh, we have people who are working at Moderna and Pfizer on, uh, on the vaccines. Consumer products and food and beverage. A lot of folks go into, uh, into this area. Um, we have folks working at, at Frito and Stacy's and Pepsi. Uh, we have folks um, not so much anymore at Procter & Gamble, but certainly in, in a lot of the, uh, let's say, in, in consumer products. They're all chemicals. We can work in chemical products. We can also work in environmental uh, protection uh, and uh, natural resources that are not, um, not mutually exclusive. I spent most of my career working in the environmental field for chemical companies, uh, most recently Dow. So we're, we're all through there. Energy and fuels. We do have folks that work in, um, in traditional energy. Uh, a number of folks every year go to work for ExxonMobil, for instance. Uh, we also have a lot of folks, and we have a very big research program in uh, more sustainable and renewable energy. Um, so we do a lot of work in fuel cell technology, in, um, in um, solar cells, in biofuels, very big program in biofuels. Uh, we can also work in microelectronics, nanotechnology, uh, about a normal year, somewhere in the 15 to 20 percent will go on to graduate school um, and looking for careers in research. Uh, and then a, a number of folks also go into design uh, and construction of, of new chemical plants. So why chemical engineering? Why WPI? Um, if you looked at all about WPI, uh, probably the first thing that comes up are the projects. So we're going to talk a lot about the project. Uh, we have very good facilities. Uh, some are quite unique, even among chemical engineering programs. We'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, I'll introduce you to some of our faculty members uh, virtually. Our students are amazing. I wish we could have had some students here this evening. Uh, we're actually on a term break. So they're off uh, on some very well-deserved rest right now. Uh, so wasn't able to get some, some there, but I'll, I'll bring in some, uh, some student perspectives. Uh, you will learn innovative thinking. Uh, we're a very entrepreneurial type, uh, type institution. You will work in an interdisciplinary manner. Uh, we try to not have too many silos. You will, you will do projects with folks from all other majors. You will get a global experience. Um, and we have project centers all over the world. Um, I understand we have someone from Qatar here this, evening, this afternoon, so welcome. Uh, we don't have a project center in Qatar, uh, but we do have, have all over the, really all over the world. I'll give you a few examples. And ultimately you'll get a great career. So projects, you are required as at WPI as, as a graduation requirement to do three significant projects. Um, one is in the humanities and arts. Um, now we're a STEM school. Most folks are not coming here uh, for humanities and arts programs, but we do have a very, very solid humanities and arts program. 
the music program, the arts program, the performing arts programs in particular are very, very good. Um, most folks will do this their sophomore year. And what it does, among other things, first, it helps provide you a good, well-rounded education. It also helps provide communication skills. You will leave here being able to communicate with a wide variety of audiences. And that is, is critical in today's world. The junior year project, typically junior year, is probably the most unique program at WPI uh, and really separates us from a lot of other institutions. Uh, it is called the Interactive Qualifying Project. Uh, we have a name for everything. Uh, and it is a project, it is not in your major. It is a project that is blending society and technology. So we are bringing technology and technological solutions to the world. Most of our most, of, most students will do this uh, at one of our project centers around the world. And so you may go to say Namibia and bring water to a village. Maybe you go to Bangkok and help them with uh, waste management problems. Uh, maybe you will go to Reykjavik, Iceland and work on, they have a, a wonderful um, geothermal energy program. So maybe you'll be working on, on something around that or maybe even Venice and working on art restoration. So in all cases, you, there is a technological component uh, and you're working with local folks. The other big thing about it is it's going to pull you away from comfort zone, away from all the resources that are here at WPI and push you to, uh, to, to really kind of push your limits, um, get out of a comfort zone and come up with a really innovative solution. The senior year, uh, you will be doing a senior thesis, which we call a major qualifying project. Um, you could do it in a working in the research lab at one of our faculty members. You could do a project at a local company, um, different than a co-op. Uh, or an internship, we, uh, the project is open-ended and uh, we're trying to make sure some learning objectives are met. Uh, you could do it at an off-campus location. We have centers in, in France, in Modesto, California, in Brazil, in Shanghai, and that list keeps growing. You can concentrate. Uh, you don't have to, but you can concentrate if you, if you choose. Uh, in the biological sciences, in the environmental, in energy, or in advanced materials. Um, and uh, um, again, there's, you are not required to, but if you choose to, if you're really excited about one of these areas, uh, you can take all your electives in that area and, uh, and, and focus. Our facilities. Excuse me. We have... Um, First, we have a senior lab. Um, it is a 6,000 square foot, three-story lab filled with uh, a, a couple dozen different unit operations, which are large pieces of equipment. Figure a typical piece of equipment. You can see a picture of it sort of on the, um, both of the top right and the bottom right to give you a sense of scale. Um, the, the bottom right shows some of our, our tall columns, and the, uh, the, the top right shows a biofuels reactor. Uh, it is dedicated to undergrad teaching. And your senior year, after you've had all the foundational material, you will be shown the equipment. Um, this is 1 20th commercial scale. Uh, and then you'll be told how to operate it and given some instructions on that and you'll design some experiments and do them and report out on them and do the data analysis. It's, um, it's where we put theory into practice. Uh, that and the, the major qualifying project in capstone design. <clears throat> we also have uh, research laboratories. Virtually every faculty member has a, their own research lab uh, and those are available for 
join a lab and, and do research with, uh, with that, just more fundamental research. And then we have the normal undergraduate and graduate computational facilities. <coughs> Excuse me. Faculty. Um, we, this is almost out of date. We have one more faculty member who is going to be starting uh, uh, starting in January. Uh, she's not shown here yet, but uh, let me go through some of these. So first, Professor Abu Lail. Uh, she is half time with us and half time with the environmental department. We, we collaborate a lot. Uh, she is running our senior lab. Uh, she is, she is actually an alumna of our program. She got her PhD there. Uh, dean Terry Camisano uh, is dean of graduate studies. She no longer teaches much, uh, but she does have an active research program, and her area is in biopharma type work. Uh, Professor Deskins. His work is in energy, uh, and he looks at energy at, from a surface standpoint. So he's trying to develop catalysts, looking at the, the very surface of the catalysts, uh, a lot of modeling. I'm going to skip Professor DiBiasio for just a moment. Uh, Professor Dixon does a lot of work in energy uh, at a reactor level, so a unit operation level, does modeling for that. Um, some experimentation, but, but mostly at the stage modeling and trying to get most energy efficient. And then Professor Kazantis takes it one step further and looks at large scale integration in very large chemical plants. How does it all fit together? Uh, going back to Professor DiBiasio, he, uh, his work, he started in the biopharma area and he is now doing most of his research in engineering education. He's actually won some. Uh, some national awards in kind of revolutionizing engineering education. Uh, my area of expertise is in uh, chemical process safety, but it's, it's from growing up. And um, I'm uh, an alumnus of the program, as I mentioned. Professor Roberts is our department head. Her area is in biopharma and she's trying to develop some anti-cancer drugs. Uh, she is an alumna of our program. Professor Stewart, uh, her area of expertise is in soft materials. So if you think of a, uh, a say someone wants to put in a new, uh, a new knee or a new hip, um, there's a big metal component that goes in there. You also need some, essentially some gaskets, some soft materials to, uh, to cushion everything. Uh, so that's among the things that she does. You have to have antimicrobial properties. Uh, Professor Stewart is a, uh, an alumna of our program. Uh, Professor Texera, is, uh, his area of expertise is also in catalysis. Uh, he has a, a large and growing lab in uh, all kinds of catalytic materials. He is an alumnus of the program. You see a, you see a trend. We have a lot of people who, uh, who come back, who really like the school and leave for a bit, maybe for grad school, maybe for work, and then want to, want to come back. Uh, Professor Timko, his area is in biofuels. Uh, he's a thermodynamicist and he's trying to look at a typical plant. Um, we're very good at taking the lignin in plants and turning it into say biodiesel. We're not so good at taking about 50% of that material, the cellulose, and doing anything with that. So he's working on that. Um, Professor Young, his area of expertise is in biopharma, and he is um, particularly in yeast catalyzed reactions. Uh, Professor Zhao is in microfluidics. She comes up with nanoscale uh, monitoring systems. So picture like a, for someone who's diabetic, you could implant a, uh, a sensor. And Professor Zorowski, his area of, of expertise is in, uh, he does a lot in our graduate program, uh, kind of overseeing projects, and he is also uh, helps out in, in the lab quite a bit. The missing is um, Professor Bailey. Uh, she'll be starting in January. She is an alumna of the program and her area is in biopharma.
both slides are not advanced. So why WPI? You'll learn to solve problems. You will analyze chemical systems start to finish. You're going to work in teams, a lot of teamwork, awful lot of teamwork. Learn how to communicate effectively. Um, you're going to get all the same chemical engineering principles that, that frankly, any, any accredited chemical engineering program will have. And you're going to address global and societal issues. You're going to make a lot of money when you graduate. Um, last year was kind of a weird year, right, with COVID. Um, so these are, these are data from March of 2020, which was kind of right at the start of COVID. Um, and so these numbers are lower than normal. Uh, at graduation, 59%, um, or just before graduation, 59% went to employment. It was an unusual year, so a lot of people, because a lot of companies were shut down, a lot of people stayed for, uh, for graduate school and got a master's. Um, usually this number is about 70% employment, about 25% grad school, and about uh, 5% uh, undecided. So uh, you'll make about, uh, current starting salaries are about 70,000 a year. And again, we go all over the place. Um, a few of our, a few of our alumni, some quotes from them. So Mike Dolan, now retired, he was the executive VP of ExxonMobil Chemical. Uh, he's a member of, he was a member of the Chemical Engineering Advisory Board, now he's a trustee. Um, and he really wanted to, uh, to travel and see the world. And uh, chemical engineering is a global, global business. Uh, and his first work was uh, with, back then it was mobile, uh, but with um, out in, in Saudi. Uh, he settled in Texas with and rose to the to the ranks. Uh, he's now retired and living in Florida. Um, great guy. See him uh, periodically at, at trustee meetings when he comes up. Uh, we we catch up. Uh, Michelle. Michelle has bounced around. She's graduated in 1990, and she's bounced around between Starbucks and Kohl's for quite a while. Um, neither particularly chemical engineering, you think. Uh, but, but she really rates her, her success in the business world um, based on leadership that she developed here. Uh, all the teamwork, all the, she, she talks about her professors, which is, which is nice, but a lot of leadership, a lot of, uh, and, and has done very, very well. She's currently CEO of Kohl's, even though this is a uh, picture of her at Starbucks. And you could even become a self, a, a screenwriter. Uh, Nancy, same class as Michelle, class of 90, uh, went on to be, become a screenwriter for, among other things, South Park. And um, she, she says, if you can survive the chemical engineering program, if you can survive organic chemistry, you can survive pretty much anything. And she's not wrong. Um, it's a tough program, but there's a lot of support and a lot of, uh, we're, we're kind of a family here. And um, it's really quite, quite good, good environment. A lot of career opportunities, um, a lot of potential to address societal challenges, more diverse, so really, really diverse systems type engineering. Um, you will find us virtually every industry. And, uh, and we're in high demand and, uh, and very well paid. The, um, as an undergrad, you are more than welcome. You're welcome uh, to, to participate in research, uh, faculty research. We're always looking for, uh, for folks to come and help. Um, and you will get a chance to present at national conferences. Uh, in fact, we just had, uh, we're running a conference at WPI live and in person right now at American Society of Engineering Educators. And we just uh, just got back from the panel with um, three current students, uh, two undergrad, one graduate student, and, uh, and one alumna, uh, recent alumna, to talk about their, their experience. 
um, as I said, we couldn't have some students here, so let me uh, let me introduce you to some of these some of our students. Um, kind of starting in the, the top left corner. Uh, so one of the things that's really big is uh, we have a very, very large Greek life uh, population. Um, and I will say as a faculty member, seeing our students gain leadership skills, seeing the charity outreach they do is really inspiring. Um, Chris Tracy, who is kind of in the center of that, um, guy with the, the reddish hair, is now with Exxon Mobil. Um, Robbie Starr is on the, the right, and I don't know the other two students, but Robbie is, uh, is actually not a chemical engineer, but he is um, he's now a graduate student here, and he and I are working together on, a, on one of the many committees at that school. Um, Brent, next one over to the, to the right, is uh, did his senior thesis in Nancy, France. Uh, one of our centers there. Um, and he did his work in fuel cells. Uh, normal question, you are more than welcome to, uh, to participate in sports. It's a very uh, strong D3 program. Um, you see Clyde um, in basketball, then you see uh, uh, Carolyn down in the bottom left in softball and uh, um, see Brandon in football, um, all, a lot of our, our students participate either in uh, division three or in club sports or in intramurals. Uh, Caitlin is doing her MQP looking at, at leachate off of wood. Uh, and that is, um, she was doing that in Nazi France. Um, keep it going down around the center. Um, we see, oh, I'm, I'm a very big arts program. Uh, the, the center there, uh, Chris is a, uh, is a recent PhD graduate from UMass Amherst, his undergrad here. Uh, he is now working at Incredible Foods. And uh, there he is collecting biomass from, uh, from a farm looking at turning it into energy. Uh, the group down with the lake and be behind them did their MQP in Brazil at a, um, at a beer manufacturer looking at water conservation. I mentioned Carol. Uh, Jake, his, uh, lost track where he is now. He, but, but there he was working, doing a presentation to, uh, to a group of high school kids during a, um, we have a big, science program called Touch Tomorrow in the summer. Uh, you can see pre presenting at, uh, at our project presentation day. And then the, uh, the with, with Halloween coming uh, every year, one of our student groups runs a big haunted house. Um, people have asked me uh, a number of times, are we a competitive environment? And, uh, and my favorite answer to that is from a student from a few years ago. Celeste Marsan, and Celeste's response was, oh, we're very competitive. We're just competitive against material, not against each other. Uh, we want to help each other. We want to form a good, strong community. And that's really, if you ask any of these students, if you ask um, really anyone on this campus, you would find the one most striking thing, even before projects, the one most striking thing is that we have a welcoming and caring community. Uh, and that is the presentation. Um, would welcome now, I'm gonna stop sharing this and uh, really kind of welcome any questions, which I think will be put into the Q&A. Anything I could answer. Hello. Hi. So Hello. while our student is thinking of their question, I have one for you. Sure. Think of all the student projects that you've seen throughout your time. Which are the ones that really stick out to you as quintessential chemical engineering, um, MQPs or IQPs? Oh, my word. Um, let me tell you about the most famous IQP project, which was not mine. 
it was in the early days of IQP, and it was run by uh, the person who was the, the architect of the WPI plan, Dean Bill Grogan, who's since passed. Um, this was an IQP that was being done in Italy. Um, and in fact, I think it was near the Italian-Austrian border. Um, and the problem was there was a, there was some farmland on one area, uh, on one side of the border, uh, that was causing a lot of runoff and pollution on the other side of the border. And the, <clears throat> that created all sorts of political problems. Um, the, the, and on and on, and it was going on and on, and the students were over there trying to figure out how to resolve this really difficult political situation. And um, one of them was doing some research, one of the students was doing some research and found out that the border was actually mislabeled. The national border had been mislabeled and the farmland was actually on the same, I think it was, the farmland was in Austria uh, and not in Italy. So they ended up having to redraw the border and save all the political mess. <laughs> so some WPI students helped redraw some national borders. So we literally challenge borders and change them. I love that. That's beautiful. So now in chemical engineering, uh, some of the best MQPs. Um, boy, we do so many. One of my favorite, I think, over the years. Um, I'll give you a couple of examples. One, I, I do a lot of work in, in, in chemical process safety. So we had one company who had some uncontrolled reactions uh, that was causing some, some things to blow up. No one injured, no danger there, but still uh, very, very dangerous. And so these students worked and they, they built with, with our machinist, they built a pilot little reactor, about one gallon in size, did a whole bunch of experiments to help redesign process, a process safety system to keep this from rupturing, from blowing up, from, from hurting people. Uh, they did a super, super job. Um, another, which I really liked, we were doing work at another company um, and they were making pigments. And you think, oh, pigment for, you know, a printer, not very exciting. But this company was having all sorts of problems. And the students went there and they said, um, okay, you know, here's, here's the problem, here's the, all the equipment. Uh, and one of the things that the students did was say, well, how do you know your, you know, is your, your equipment all calibrated and all correct? And the company said, of course they are, you know, just that, that's not the issue, go away. Um, here's what you need to be working on. And the students, pushed back very professionally, very appropriately. Um, and the, the company was not very receptive, but the students held their ground. They were, they were good, strong, knowledgeable. And they did some testing and they found out that no, as a matter of fact, the, the company's equipment that they were using to do the testing was broken and uncalibrated they got it fixed and in the process fixed the company's problem. And the company was just absolutely amazed. And the last one I'll share with you, um, this one company, we do, we do some work in another chemical process, uh, which is brewing. Very big, big industry. And so this company was working with a very small craft microbrewery uh, that, that's local to, to the WPI. And it's a big growing industry in this area. Um, and 
this brewer had his idea about what he wanted for a beer and was never able to, uh, to get it. And a lot of the beer was coming out really kind of bad, to be perfectly honest. Sometimes it was wonderful, sometimes it was bad. Well, the students, you think it's beer, right? How difficult is it? The students did hundreds of experiments, all sorts of chemical analysis on all these different experiments, found out what was causing the beer to go bad, came up with their solution, presented it to the guy. They now have a beer named after them at this little local brewery. And uh, so is it saving the world though, no, but it's making some, some people Absolutely. And it shows really that development of those soft skills that we talk about all the time, right? The yeah. being able to navigate difference when you're in a group. I'm sure that helped in the instance of the pigment. And even again, taking the smallest tasks and making the biggest um, impact is incredible that our students do that. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't look like our friend here has any questions for now. Uh, Professor, if we want to get in contact with you, how do we do that? Uh, the easiest way, I'm, I'm on the website, but the easiest way, my email is sjkimotek, K-M-I-O-T-E-K, at wpi.edu. Perfect. Um, and you can find me on the WPI website, the chemical engineering page. Be happy to answer any questions on that. Thank you so much. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to admissions at wpi.edu. But as always, this is incredible. I learned a lot about chemical engineering. I thought it was all chemistry, but you proved me wrong today <laughs> for that. And, and good luck on your decision. You know, coming, uh, it's making a decision about college is a very hard one. Um, yes. And uh, good luck in that decision process. Thank you very much. You've been incredible. Thank you for those who've joined us. And if you need anything, we're here for you. All right. Nice. Thanks so much. At the conference. Bye now.